welcome to our Crazy Life Scotland. It's Fiona here with my weekly weigh-in update. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, I do the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting and I'm doing that to A, try and lose a bit of weight but also to try to help my chronic illness and the chronic neuropathic pain that I have in my feet. Right, first of all, I want to apologise for the kind of rough appearance this morning. I know I look rough most of the time but I feel like I look even rougher this morning. Basically I've had a very busy week. I am exhausted. I'm feeling a bit run down. I've even got a cold sore starting. I've not had a cold sore for over a year I think. Um, and my B12 injection, my vitamin B12 injection for my pernicious anemia is due today. So I am very, very run down, but I will be getting my injection this afternoon and hopefully that will perk me up a bit. So that's the reason why I look a bit bedraggled and a bit rougher than normal. Anyway, let's get into it. Like I said, I've had a very busy week. Thursday and Friday were fine, they were normal. Saturday I had a lovely girly day out with Abby and I did vlog it so I will link that in the cards and below in case you've not seen it yet. But because I was out all day it meant that I only ate twice on Saturday and I mean I only ate twice. I didn't have anything else to eat in between the two meals that you saw on the vlog. And both of the meals I had were eating out. Um, but it just goes to show that you can stick to plan when you're out, even on keto. Oh, that was the other thing that I meant to say. I am also doing No Nonsense November, which means I have challenged myself to stay on track every single day in November without coming off the keto diet. And so far, so good. I am loving it. I have been tempted, don't get me wrong, but... I have stuck to it because I know that I've set myself this challenge. I want to do it. I don't want to let myself down. I don't want to let you lot down. So yeah. So when I was out with Abby on Saturday, it would have been so easy for me just to eat whatever I wanted in McDonald's and whatever I wanted in Weatherspoons. They've got some gorgeous looking festive things out in Weatherspoons just now. Oh, But I didn't. As you will see in the vlog, I had a bunless double bacon cheeseburger. No, double... I never know what it's called. Some kind of thing that had two burgers and cheese and bacon on it um, in McDonald's. And then in Weatherspoons, I went for the chicken, bacon and avocado salad. And it was lovely. Really, really good. And there was a load of avocado on it, so it definitely filled me up. I was a wee bit worried that I'd only eaten twice and I thought, oh, I'm going to be hungry, but I wasn't at all. Um, by the time I got my McDonald's, I was hungry because it was about 12 o'clock and I hadn't eaten anything at all. And, uh, and I usually break my fast around half past 10. But the fact that we didn't finish in Weatherspoons until about six, quarter past six, that was my usual time for finishing eating, so I wasn't thinking about food after that anyway. Sunday was a normal day food-wise. I was in the house. The girls were baking, which, again, temptation, because you always want to try what your kids have made, don't you? It's just it's the thing that you do. But they understand that I'm being very focused this month, so they were fine. But, oh, the smell. Oh, I so wanted a biscuit. Now, on Monday, I knew that I was going out in the afternoon. Brooke's school were taking them to our local borough hall to watch a production of Aladdin, the pantomime, and the parents were all invited along to watch. So that was at half past one. So I thought, right, what I'll do is I'll have my porridge before I go, which I did. I broke my fast as normal about half past 10 with my coffee. Then about half past 12, I had porridge, keto porridge. And then I went out to the pantomime. Then when I came back, I made my dinner as I was expecting to. And that was just our fish, our salmon, not salmon, the smoked bass fillets with some spring greens and mushrooms through it, which was lovely. And normally I would then end my eating window a couple of hours later with a chaffle or um, a hot chocolate with cream or something like that. 
However, on Monday, after the pantomime, Brooke informed me that the sole of her boot had fallen off. And so she had walked down from the school to the hall with uh, one intact boot and one boot without a sole. She says, but it's okay, mum, I've got the sole in my bag. Well, what am I meant to do with that? So I thought, right, after dinner, we're going to have to go out to Asda to get our new school boots because we threw our school shoes in the bin. They were kind of done anyway, and it's not shoe weather now, it's boot weather. So I thought, I've got nothing to put on our feet tomorrow. We need to go to Asda. And also, Jack said that he would come with me and on the way we would go to the vet because little Molly, who, if you watch my videos, you will know she's lying beside me, which is why I looked at her and I've got my hand out clapping there. I'm not just being a bit weird. Um, we've noticed that she's got a little lump on her side. So we wanted to take her to the vet and get that checked out. So we were a wee while at the vet. The vet's basically, she drained some of it and had a quick look at it and said she doesn't think that it's a lymphoma, which would be cancer. She doesn't think it's a fatty lump, which is just a benign lump that um, our old husky storm had loads of them. Um, and if they're not bothering them, they just leave them. But she doesn't think it's that. She's not sure what it is because it's an odd shape. So she's measured it and she has told us to book her in for next Thursday morning, so a week today, to have it removed if it hasn't disappeared or got significantly smaller. She would just rather be on the safe side and remove it and that way we can they can send it away to the lab and get it properly looked at just to see exactly what it is. So she's fine in herself, wee Molly. She's not, it doesn't seem to be hurting her and she's still running about like an idiot. So she is absolutely fine, but yeah, we ended up having to go to the vet. So by the time we did that, then got through to Asda, and then Jack wanted to go to B&Q. So we basically ended up not getting home until nine o'clock at night. So I had finished my dinner at half four and hadn't had anything else to eat. That basically meant that I had only eaten twice again on Monday, not deliberately. And it also meant that I had finished eating at half past four instead of half past six. Now, I did think to myself, look, if you're hungry, just have a coffee or something when you get home and then start your fast from there. However, by the time I got home, I was so tired, I just wanted to go to my bed. And it meant that I could break my fast about half past nine, um, no, half past eight, 16 hours from half past four, because I fast for 16 hours, half past four. Yeah, half past eight, I could have broken my fast. I thought, well, that's a good thing because I knew I was going out with Abby on Tuesday night. So I thought if I start eating earlier, I can finish eating earlier and that will be great. So I broke my fast. I It was about nine o'clock before um, I had anything. I wasn't even thinking about it. I was so busy. I broke my fast with my coffee at nine o'clock and I, then I was absolutely freezing. So about 11 o'clock, I had a hot chocolate, keto hot chocolate, obviously, with cream. And that actually, it did heat me up, but it also filled me up. So I wasn't ready for my soup until about two o'clock. And I knew that if I was having my soup at two o'clock, I wouldn't be ready for my dinner at like four o'clock. So what I did, we were meant to be having sausages that night. So I made the sausages as normal and had Jack's dinner all prepared for him so he could just heat it up when he came in. But what I did was, instead of having my dinner separately, I broke up my sausage and put it in my soup, which was lovely, by the way. It was really, really nice. And it made it more filling. And I was intending to have a coffee or something before we left. But I didn't have time. And to be honest, I was still too full. So it was about half past four, quarter to five that me and Abby left. We went to see Jack Whitehall, the stand-up comedian in the SSE Hydro, and it was brilliant. What a night we had. We laughed from start to finish. Even his warm-up act was brilliant, and he, he used his warm-up warm act throughout the show in different ways and then at the very end he had an all singing, all dancing finale. It was just brilliant. I have to say, if you like that sort of humour, Jack Whitehall, go and see him. It was brilliant. And 
I don't know if any of you watch Jack Whitehall, but he does programmes with um, his dad. He does travels with my father, I think it's called, which is brilliant. And it's basically his dad, Jack Whitehall sounds quite posh, but his dad's very posh. And his dad sent him to boarding school. It's that kind of family. And his dad shocked by a lot of the things that they see and that's going on when they go to Thailand and things like that. But they've got a brilliant relationship and it's so funny. And at the very start of the show, you could hear his dad's voice. His dad sort of introduced it, but he wasn't on stage. And we were like, yeah, his dad's here, his dad's here. But then his dad never actually came on until the very, very end They'd all taken their bows and gone off. And then two seconds later, his dad comes on the stage and the crowd went wild. They actually cheered more for him than we did for Jack Whitehall. It was brilliant. And he only came on for two seconds. He basically just said, that's the show over. Fuck off. <laughs> and then he left again. It was brilliant. So I highly, highly recommend going to see Jack Whitehall if he is coming to a theatre near you and he still has tickets left. Brilliant. So, what I was really worried about was, getting back to the subject in hand, the fact that I hadn't eaten anything since half past two. I usually don't finish my eating until half past six, and I thought, I'm going to be starving. Really, really hungry. And when we got out of the show, I thought, I am hungry. And Abby was starving because we basically left as soon as she got in from school. She got changed and we went. But... I had made sausages for her as well, so she ate them in the car, but that wasn't enough for her. So by the time the show finished, she was begging me to go to McDonald's. And I was thinking, oh, I could really go on McDonald's, but it was late. And I thought, do you really need it? Or is it your head telling you, you've not had anything to eat since half past two. You're going to starve if you don't get anything to eat. And I thought, yeah, I'm hungry. But no, I'm not hungry enough to have like a McDonald's or anything like that. So I just had a drink. I had taken a can of juice with me. So I just had a can of my Pepsi Max cherry. And I know, strictly speaking, that's not fasting. But it wasn't eating. So I'm just counting it just as once as fasting. So I did take her to McDonald's, but I didn't have anything. I was really tired, to be honest. It was midnight before we got home. So I just went straight to my bed and I thought... Yeah, you think you're hungry, but you're going to go to sleep. And then when you get up in the morning, you can eat as soon as you want, basically. Because half past six, I would have been able to break my fast. And that would have still been a 16-hour fast. But as I thought, it was psychological hunger. When I got up in the morning, I wasn't hungry. I carried on doing what I always do, getting the girls organised for school, getting the house tidied, the washing done, all the usual jazz that you do in the morning. So I didn't actually break my fast until half past nine. So that was a 19 hour fast that I did. And I was really proud of myself because that's the longest that I fasted, apart from when I was ill, obviously. Um, and it was really good. And I just kept reminding myself the whole thing about fasting and the whole reason that I wasn't hungry was especially doing fasting along with the keto diet your body learns that your body has enough fat for it to burn for fuel. So because I'm already a fat burner anyway with being on the ketogenic diet, I knew that the reason I wasn't hungry was my body was eating my own body fat, which is a good thing. That's what we all want. We all want to use our own body fat for energy rather than the energy that we put into it. That's how we lose weight. So... Yeah, I was really pleased with myself and like I said, I wasn't starving, I wasn't desperate to eat. I was just quite happy to break my fast at half past nine with my coffee as usual. So it was good. Um, so that was Saturday I only ate twice, Tuesday, no, Monday I only ate twice and then Tuesday I only ate once because I did have my coffee and my hot chocolate but the only actual food that I had was my soup with the sausage in it and yeah so I have been really yesterday was just a normal day of eating um I broke my fast at the normal time stopped eating at my normal time so it was all good so this has been a great week eating wise what have I had different my soup this week I made broccoli mushroom and celery soup which was lovely and I still added my creme fraiche to make it nice and creamy and filling and I've really enjoyed that. 
And the other thing that I tried this week was venison meatballs from Asda. They were delicious. Now, there was only 2.7 grams of carbs in four meatballs, and I actually only had three. So, yeah, they were definitely keto-friendly. And what I did, I just put them in the slow cooker and I made a sauce the same as I would on Slimming World, basically. I added tomatoes, herbs, onion, um, what else, garlic. And that was it, I think. And I just let that cook and then I made pasta for Jack and Abby to have with theirs. But for mine, what I did, I scraped a lot of the sauce off because tomatoes are really quite carby. I don't cook with tomatoes a lot now that I'm keto. And also, I'm not a huge tomato fan, to be honest. So I scraped a lot of the sauce off, but they still had the flavour. And I cut them up. I didn't, I, I, didn't, I was going to have some um, cauliflower rice or something like that with it. But I wasn't really that hungry and I didn't fancy it. So I cut the meatballs up. I sprinkled them with some parmesan and then I sprinkled them with some, um, what's that cheese called? Mozzarella cheese, put it in the microwave and the cheese all melted and oh, it was so good, really good. I'm definitely going to get them again. Jack and Abby really enjoyed it as well. Oh, I added some chilli flakes to the sauce as well, just to give it a wee bit of a kick. And yeah, Jack and Abby really enjoyed it as well. So we're definitely going to have that again. And... I think that was the only new thing that I had this week. Like I said, I ate out twice on Saturday. So I've been really pleased that I've kept on track food-wise. No Nonsense November still on, everybody. Woo! How about you? Are you all still doing No Nonsense November? Are you managing to stay on track? We have a big month coming up next month. So, yep, definitely important to do what we can this month. And... My fasting has been brilliant this week as well. I've fasted every day and more than normal twice. So it's all good, folks. It's all good. I have felt very slim this week. I wouldn't say I feel like I've lost a stone in weight or anything like that. But I've not felt bloated. Especially around my worst bit is sort of around my rib cage, And I felt that that's gone down quite a bit this week. And... I've just felt good. Now, someone did ask me a couple of weeks ago about the pain in my feet because I've not mentioned that for a while. And the reason I hadn't mentioned it was when I was on and off plan all the time as I was in October, the pain was coming and going all the time as well. It wasn't great. Since I have been back, that's now three weeks. Yep, three weeks I've been fully on plan. The pain has stabilised and most of the time through the day it's not too bad however at night it's getting really bad and I think it's just the cold and that's normal for me it does get worse the pain does get worse in the winter and I think it's just the cold affecting the nerves even more so I do have <coughs> excuse me I do have some bed socks that I wear to try and keep my feet warm and it does help a little bit so yeah, the pain has definitely stabilised, I would say, with me being completely back on plan. Whether or not the diet is helping, I don't know, but it's helping the way that I feel. It is helping me lose a bit of weight and I'm just happy eating like this, so I'm going with it anyway. So what did happen this week? I told you that I felt slim. What happened when I stepped on the scales? I wasn't worried about what the result was going to be because I knew I had done great and I knew that I felt good. So this week when I stepped on the scales, I was 138 pounds exactly, which means this week I have a happy whiteboard because I've lost 0 0.4 pounds. I have lost 0 0.4 pounds. No, it's not a lot, but yes, it is a loss and I am happy with that because that means I've lost every single week since starting No Nonsense November and next week which is we've got one more full week of No Nonsense November left so at the end of that I'm going to count up exactly how much I've lost in the whole month. One thing that I wanted to tell you about when we were out at Asda on Monday night getting Brooke's school boots which we did get by the way thankfully I finally found I have been looking for this for ages the 
I had seen on channels that Coke Zero were doing their cinnamon flavour again and also a clementine flavour and I thought, oh nice. So I've been looking everywhere for weeks for these. When I was in Asda on Monday, I finally found the cinnamon one. I didn't find the clementine, but the cinnamon was there and I thought, yes, I'm getting that. So I grabbed two bottles of it and I had a drink of it on, excuse me, I've got an itchy shoulder. I had a drink of it on Tuesday. I had one mouthful of it and almost spat it out. It wasn't Coke Zero that I picked up. It was the normal Coke cinnamon. The bottles are so similar. Please, please, if you're getting something like that, be careful. I could tell as soon as I tasted it because I've cut sugar out my diet, so I could taste that sugar straight away. I knew there was sugar in that. And I thought, how close was that? That was almost self-sabotage. Um, I don't think the one mouthful that I had would have done too much damage. But, wow. Please, please be careful. But the most disappointing thing was that I had two bottles of cinnamon coke that I couldn't drink. And I have to say, it was lovely with the cinnamon. That one wee taste that I had. So I gave it to the girls. It's not, like, gone completely to waste. And I will be on the lookout for it again. But how close? That was such a close call. So easy to do. And especially for something like the keto diet... If you're doing Slim and World, yeah, it would be a few extra sins, but wouldn't be such a disaster. But doing the keto diet, if you take in too much sugar, that's it. You're knocked out of ketosis and you have to wait until you get back into it again. So, phew. Coming up this week, um, tomorrow night my mum and dad are coming over. Oh, that was the other thing that happened this week. The council came out to inspect their log cabin and it's all good. It's all been signed off. They're happy that it's all been built in accordance with the the regulations and the planning and all the rest of it. So that's all been signed off. Yay! So it's official now and during Vlogmas I will give you a little tour of their cabin. But um, my mum and dad are coming over on tomorrow night, Friday night, to measure up something and just, I don't know. But they're coming for the night anyway. It won't make any difference to me because I'm going to stick to it. Saturday, the in-laws are coming again. They're going to the football again with Jack and Abby. So I'm going to have Rio. Oh, poor Rio last week. Hopefully she won't be bad this week. I think she'll remember us all again and she will hopefully be a lot calm. But I won't let the stress make me eat anyway. And they are staying over this time, which means they probably will bring a takeaway back with them. But the good thing is, with me doing the intermittent fasting, it will be past my eating window anyway, so I won't be tempted. I'll just make sure that I have something really tasty and really filling before I close my eating window, and that way I won't be tempted by the takeaway. Then Sunday we have a canny cross race, and... It will be quite a long day, so I need to be prepared for that. That's the one day that I could easily slip up because we'll be out all day. I need to make sure that I take enough food with me that is keto-friendly that I can eat because there will be a burger van there. In fact, that's the point. It's the Gastro Gorilla that are going to be there again who were at one of the races that I did the vlog in. And they've got some really good food. Their burgers are brilliant. And I will be getting a voucher for a free roll because I'll be marshalling. So what I might do is I might just get something from there but take it off the roll. And in fact, the last time they were really good, I said to them, go and just give me a burger without the roll. And they did it. So, yeah, that'll be fine. But then we won't get home until way after my eating window closes. There might be a McDonald's involved, but again, if so, I'll just have it without the bun. But if not, I will just take food with me to be on the safe side. So that's the only day, hello Clyde, that's the only day that I could slip up. Apart from a week today, the Thursday, which is when Molly goes into the vets. Um, I am bad at emotional eating, um, so I'm going to have to be careful. But I'll talk more about that in my update next week, because that will be the Thursday's the beginning of my week, if you like. Um, hey wee girl, hey wee Molly, are you going to say hello to everybody? Do you want to say hello? 
the puppies haven't said hello to you today. They've actually been quiet. I've got the blinds closed in here because you know what Clyde's like, especially at this time of year. I think it's squirrels that he keeps seeing running up the trees. So hold on, I'm going to turn you around and let you say hello to the puppies. So there's wee Molly. She's been lying snuggled up beside me. Hello wee girl. Hello gorgeous girl. Nice and quiet for a change. Like I said, the lump doesn't seem to be bothering her, so hopefully it's not going to be anything major. But it will be a wee anaesthetic for her next week, so it will be quite difficult. And there's Clyde. Hello, Clyde. Who's been nice and quiet today? You've been a nice, quiet boy. Wait, I'll see if I can get the other puppies through for you. Well, Rana, come and see us, puppies. There she is. There's a Willa. Hello, hello, oh I'm getting cut, oh, oh I'm getting cuddles, hello big bear, oh, well oh, that was a noisy yawn, there's the big bear, so that's you all had your puppy fix for the week, eh, he's a good boy Rana, yeah so, excuse all that stuff there, it's going to the tip, Brooke has been a good girl this week, and she has sorted out a lot of her toys that she's going to give to charity, and a lot of her toys that can just get bins that are broken because of course Santa's coming soon so it was time for a clear out and yes there is still a pumpkin sitting there. Abby got a pumpkin but didn't carve it so it's still perfectly fine and it's still autumn so it's staying there. <laughs> right so I am going to go now. I've kept you long enough as usual and I will go just now. I have got a shopping haul coming up on Monday that is going to be the haul from the vlog that you'll have seen hopefully um, from last Saturday I'm going to show you all the things that we bought then so that's going to be up on Monday for you and then I'll have my update again on Thursday if I've not got anything else in between right I'm going to go now and I'll see you in my next one. Oh, please please hit that thumbs up button subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell notification and we'll see you in the next one Bye! Say bye!